Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today's video should hopefully be a short one, but still an interesting one. For those out there that are either currently gaming on an HDR display or are thinking of upgrading to an HDR display in the near future. So you might remember a few weeks ago, I looked into the performance differences between HDR and SDR gaming on graphics cards using Nvidia's Pascal architecture. Using a Titan X Pascal, I found that simply enabling HDR resulted in a 4% hit to performance on average across a handful of titles, while enabling G-Sync HDR tanked performance by a pretty significant 12% average. Not all games saw this performance hit when enabling HDR, but certainly enough of them did to cause concern for HDR gamers. In that video, I suggested the performance hit was due to some driver side work that was needed to send out HDR and specifically G-Sync HDR signals through Pascal's display engine, with the amount of work varying depending on the game and its HDR implementation. Well today, there's a new NVIDIA graphics architecture in town in the form of Turing. We've already talked a lot about the performance of Turing GPUs in our previous reviews of the RTX 2080 and RTX 2080 Ti, but one thing we didn't really touch on was the improvements NVIDIA made to the display engine. One of the key changes is the inclusion of a native HDR pipeline. This essentially means that what NVIDIA was previously doing in software through drivers can now be done natively in hardware on Turing-based cards. Tone mapping in particular is one aspect of HDR that Turing can now do natively, and this theoretically should resolve the HDR performance issues we saw with Pascal, and I'll get onto that in a moment. The other key new feature of Turing's display engine is support for DisplayPort 1.4a with DSC, or Display Stream Compression. DSC is a Visa standard that provides, in their words, visually lossless compression, enabling support for higher resolutions and refresh rates without chroma subsampling. Previous Pascal cards were limited to 4K HDR at 98Hz, or 8K at just 30Hz through a single cable, while Turing with DSC support can now output put 4K HDR at 144Hz without subsampling and 8K at 60Hz through a single cable. That doesn't mean today's 4K 144Hz HDR displays like the Acer Predator X27 will be able to run at 144Hz without chroma subsampling with a Turing GPU. For DSC to work, it needs to be supported on both ends of the display cable, so both the GPU and monitor itself need to support the technology. And in the case of these current 4K 144Hz monitors, the monitor does not support DSC. But it does mean that we now have GPUs capable of running displays at 4K 144Hz and 8 8K 60Hz, so one side of that equation is ready. Now it's up to monitor manufacturers to release new displays that integrate support for DSC, allowing full 4K 144Hz with HDR in all its glory. I did say in my review of the Predator X27 and ASUS PG27UQ that buyers of this panel might feel a bit burned when many of the early adopter issues are fixed in a second generation of the product and the subsampling issue seems to be one that will be fixed relatively quickly. Anyway, back to HDR. NVIDIA claims we shouldn't be seeing any performance hit with HDR enabled compared to SDR, so let's put that to the test using the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition and the exact same system I used previously, my personal Ryzen 7 1700 editing rig, and of course the Acer Predator X27 G-Sync HDR display as the monitor in hand. Let's first take a look at some of the games that were most impacted by HDR processing with Pascal graphics cards. In Middle Earth Shadow of War, enabling HDR on a Pascal card resulted in a 5% hit to performance, and enabling G-Sync HDR saw a massive drop of 14%. However, with Turing, that performance drop is eradicated. There's only a 1 FPS difference between SDR gaming and G-Sync HDR gaming, and that's basically within the margin of error. Star Wars Battlefront 2 was another game heavily impacted by HDR, seeing drops of 5% with HDR enabled and 13% with G-Sync HDR enabled. However, on the RTX 2080 Ti, there is essentially no difference between HDR and SDR performance, and these results carry over to Battlefield 1, which uses the same engine and had nearly the same performance issues with Pascal. No such problems with Turing. In Assassin's Creed Origins, again we saw up to an 11% performance drop with G-Sync HDR enabled. With Turing, I did see a slight dip in performance switching on HDR, but now we're talking about just you know, 1 to 2 FPS and a 3% performance hit as opposed to 11%. Hitman wasn't as impacted by HDR on Pascal, with just a 4 to 6% performance drop, but again on the 2080 Ti, that deficit has been erased entirely. 
A couple of games did see no performance hit with HDR or G-Sync HDR enabled on Pascal. Those were Far Cry 5 and the new Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which I went back and tested for this video. Unsurprisingly, these titles also saw no HDR performance impact on Turing cards. So in the case of the new display engine in Turing, what Nvidia has claimed is absolutely the truth. The new HDR pipeline completely resolves the issue of worse performance with HDR enabled compared to SDR. That's great news for those currently gaming on HDR displays, but also for the future as HDR will no doubt become much more widespread in the next few years. Turing's new HDR pipeline is also why Nvidia decided to benchmark games using HDR for their early comparisons between the RTX 2080 and GTX 1080. You might remember Remember this famous slide from before launch where Nvidia tested games like Shadow of War and Mass Effect Andromeda using HDR, showing impressive performance gains between the 2080 and 1080. I speculated at the time that Nvidia did this because Turing had no HDR performance drop, which makes Turing look that little bit faster than Pascal despite most gamers being more interested in regular SDR performance where the margins would be narrower. And it looks like that was the correct assumption to make going on what we know now. The other question you might be wondering is, should I buy a Turing card over a Pascal card if I'm gaming on an HDR display? For example, should you buy an RTX 2080 over a GTX 1080 Ti? As we know, in SDR games, the RTX 2080 delivers almost the exact same performance as the GTX 1080 Ti, yet it costs around 100 to 150 US dollars more. So around 20% more for the same performance. As Steve said in his review, the 2080 only really makes sense at the AIB MSRP, but no 20 2080 you can buy right now is even close to that price, making it poor value for SDR gamers. But for HDR gamers, we're seeing a situation where HDR games are 12% slower on the 1080 Ti compared to the 2080 purely thanks to Pascal's non-native HDR pipeline. That changes the equation somewhat. The 1080 Ti is around 17% cheaper, but in these HDR games it's also 12% slower. That doesn't make the 2080 the standout value option, but it does close the margin somewhat compared to regular SDR gaming. The issue though is that this comparison only holds true for the handful of titles that are affected by HDR on Pascal. There are some games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider that run perfectly fine in the HDR mode on Pascal with no performance drop. There are also still a lot of games that don't support HDR at all, so if you plan on playing any of those on the 2080, the value proposition just gets worse and worse. So my advice for HDR gamers thinking of upgrading to something like the 2080 is still to just get the 1080 Ti, as despite Turing's new HDR pipeline, the 1080 ADTI is better value going on current prices. That's it for this revisit of HDR performance with Turing cards in hand. If you haven't already seen our 35 game benchmark of the 2080 and 2080 Ti, go back and take a look at that because it's pretty comprehensive to say the least. Subscribe for more graphics card coverage. Consider supporting us on Patreon so that we can afford to benchmark 35 games with the next GPU release. And I'll catch you in the next one.